Time now for the tropical update. Our hurricane specialist, Michael Lowry, is standing by at the expert desk. And Michael, this is the time of year when it's pretty easy to go back in history and see some fairly memorable hurricanes. That's right, Nick. It's quiet in the Atlantic, but five years ago this week, we were looking at Tropical Storm Fay that brought a lot of heavy rainfall to parts of Florida, a lot of gusty winds and heavy rainfall. And Fay will really be known for its track because it was one of these storms that actually made landfall multiple times, making landfall four separate times. This is some video out of Melbourne showing those gusty winds that I was just talking about, but really Fay known for the heavy rainfall. We're talking about 15,000 homes that were flooded across parts of the southeast. If you look at the track though that I have up here, four landfalls starting first in Key West on the 18th of August, and then making landfall as a second landfall as a 65 mile per hour tropical storm, actually strengthened here over the Florida Peninsula, re-emerging briefly over the Western Atlantic, and then racing across the Northern Florida Peninsula and into the Western Florida Panhandle. We're talking about 15 plus inches of rainfall over over East Central Florida, 27 inches in the city of Melbourne alone, another 27 inches up here north of Tallahassee and Thomasville. And it was also a prolific tornado producer, producing 50 tornadoes across five different states. Fortunately today though, another quiet day across the Atlantic, really hardly a cloud in the sky. The only thing really to take note of is this tropical disturbance that's pushing westward through the Central Caribbean. Just a few showers and thunderstorms here over Haiti and the Dominican Republic, but otherwise, quiet across the Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific though, it's another story. We're actually watching two separate tropical disturbances. Invest 94E here to the southwest of the Pacific coast of Mexico and another disturbance off here to the west. And this could get a little interesting for the U.S. as we get into the early part of next week. I'll explain why. The Hurricane Center though really liking the odds for development giving this a 90% chance of becoming a tropical depression or a tropical storm. If it becomes a tropical storm, it'll be called Ivo over the next few days. But let's step through the forecast here because all of the, those uh, thunderstorms that you're seeing down there, the reds and the oranges, all of that deep moisture will be moving up toward the Baja California Peninsula over the next few days and then possibly toward the U.S. by early next week. So if we, sh if we put on our low level spin, you can see it down here. Here we are today. If we move this forward in time, you can see that spin becomes better defined and that system that's now west of Invest 94 uh, e will sort of be pin, uh, pinwheeled around and all the moisture associated with it will be pushed up in toward the Colorado River Basin by early next week. So we're talking about possible impacts here as we move into early next week. Heavy rainfall across parts of Southern California, Arizona and Nevada, including widespread thunderstorms possible. We have a few days to watch this and we'll keep you updated. Vivian, back to you. All right.